yeah this is the problem wherein uh, we are asked to find out the dtft of the signal x of n which is given as 2 minus half power n for magnitude n less than or equal to 4 so what is this magnitude n less than or equal to 4 it means that x of n is this for n less than or equal to 4 and for n greater than or equal to minus 4. Okay, that is the meaning of this. For n less than or equal to 4 and for n greater than or equal to minus 4. Okay, that is the meaning of this magnitude and zero otherwise. Fine. And they have not asked us to find out uh, the uh, DTFT of this by the property. So we shall uh, go on with uh, the equation for x e bar j omega. Okay. That is this. Fine. This is the signal given which is in time domain. We are finding the dt of t of this. That means we are finding the frequency uh, domain signal for this which is this. Fine. So uh, it clearly says, see here, it clearly says it is going from minus 4 to plus 4. Okay, that's why this minus infinity to plus infinity would now become minus infinity to minus 4 to plus 4 and in place of x of n we have this. Okay, so we have two parts here. One is 2 and another one is half power n. So both these parts needs to be associated with this exponential and which each part will have the summation term. Understand this? Now, uh, this is uh, a finite summation and plus it is not starting at zero mind you. Okay, so this is what we need to be little careful about and this is not in standard form. Let this be, let this upper uh, limit be infinity or let this uh, upper limit be a finite number. But this lower limit always has to be a minus. I would understand that. Okay. This has to be zero. This has to be zero. N should be starting from zero, but it's starting at minus four. So that needs to be taken care of. Now, if it has to start at zero, what I need to do, how can I make this zero? So you can, I can add plus four to the whole equation here. So what it would become, it would become N plus four equal to minus four plus four. Why am, I adding, why am I adding plus 4? Because I want this to become 0. So minus 4 plus 4 would give 0. So on this side, we'll have plus 4. And whatever plus 4 you're doing, it is shifting it to the right. So you need to do the same shift here also. So if you're doing plus 4 here, you have to do plus 4 here also. And why doing that plus 4 here is important is because this is a finite number. If this is infinity, we never would have bother about uh, what happens to infinity if we add 4. So it would still be infinity, isn't it? So that's why in the problems where this upper limit is infinity, we were not bothered to change this infinity number. Okay, we were happy doing it here and we used to move on. But since it is finite here, so we need to take care of that. Fine, so that is what is done here. So we need to make this, we need to bring it here, we need to bring it here. Fine. So it is n plus 4 equal to 0. So we need to have plus 4 here. Okay. So uh, it would become so if n plus 4 is m, okay, m minus 4 is your n. So instead of seeing n plus 4, we are doing that. And see here, this has to be plus 4. Plus 4, 4 plus 4, 4 plus 4 because we are doing that. So that is what one needs to observe here the upper limit. Everybody understand that? Okay. See here, this 4 plus 4, if you are, if you are noting it down, noted that it should be 4 plus 4. Okay. Because we have done plus 4 here. Okay. It has to be plus 4 here also. That's why I am insisting that this has to be correct. Okay. Then see here, you have to use this formula now. It is 0, but it is going till 8. If it is going till 8, this is the formula, okay, which we have seen already, okay. With that formula, you have to just uh, simplify that. You will happen to get this, okay. 
So this is here uh, what can be taken outside the summation. This term to the power four can be taken outside. This term to the power minus four can be taken outside. Here two tech two can be taken outside, and along with that, e power minus j e power plus j omega four can be taken out. So just do those simplifications, okay, and uh, you will get this. And in this term, what is common? See this exponential and these two are common. Take that common, and this is what your DTF is going to be. Understand? So here in all these problems, dealing with this summation is what is important. Okay. So remember, it has to be plus four here. Four plus four. Four plus four. This has to become eight. That's why I'm very particularly showing that this has to be eight. Understand? Okay. So if you can, if you can write plus four here, that's better. Four plus four. Four plus four because we are doing. Plus four here. Yeah. Understand that? Okay. That is how we have got this. Now uh, let's move on to the inverse duty. I, I took this uh, problem because I just wanted to give you one other problem regarding that uh, finite uh, summation problem. Okay. So that's why that problem was taken. Now we shall see the inverse DTFT. In inverse DTFT, what happens? The DTFT is given. That is. The frequency domain signal is given. We need to obtain the time domain signal that is x of n. Till now we were writing the equation for x e par j omega. Now we have to be writing the equation for x of n because we need to find x of n here. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of this? It is zero from omega naught to zero. Okay, and it is one from pi to omega naught. It's not only that. See here. There is magnitude, so always when this magnitude is there, you need to be a little careful regarding that. Okay, so it's minus omega naught to pi is one, minus pi is one. Another one is pi to omega naught is another. I'll just show you here. You need to be a little careful regarding this. This is written as minus pi to pi. That's the standard equation. Okay, now how? Do they split this? How this x e par j omega is one from where to where? Yeah, it's one from minus pi to minus omega naught. That is minus pi to minus omega naught, and it is one also from omega naught to pi. Since this magnitude is there, you need to have these two minus as well as plus omega naught and pi. Understand that. So whenever there is a magnitude, be little careful regarding the range of integration or range of summation when we are finding out the DTFT. Is that okay with you? Now let's just see how it happens. So we integrate that, and after integrating this exponential, we'll be having j a exponential itself along with j n in the denominators. Similarly here, and apply the limits of integration. After applying limits of integration, you would find this. Okay. Now, both where in in both the terms there is minus. Yes. So you can bring this J two term here, along with both the terms. Okay. So, so you would find what what you would find. So you need to again rearrange. Okay. Because there is both are minus J's here. Okay. So this minus j omega n has to come with this plus j omega n, okay? And this j n pi e par j n pi has to come with e par minus j n pi. So to do that and rearrange the terms like this, taking this j to a two j inside, okay? So what would this be? This would be sine n pi, isn't it? So one by n pi, and this is sine n pi, and this is sine omega naught n. And we know what is sine n pi. Sine n pi is zero, so this vanishes. So what left behind is what is left behind is this. So this is your x of n. Hope you have understood this. We are doing the inverse DTFT problem. Okay, in inverse DTFT problem, x e par j omega. That is the DTFT is given. So we need to find out x of n. So it's uh, just the uh, substitution of DTFT 
and simplification of integration. Fine, integral equation. Fine. Let's go on with the next problem. Again, very similar, very, very similar to that. We have time domain. You have, you have to finding out the time domain signal x of n, provided uh, the DTFT is given. Okay, this is the DTFT. Again, you need to bring this DT, uh, DTFT in place of this. Okay, and uh, since it is easier to deal with exponentials rather than the sinusoidals when we are integrating, let's express this cause in terms of exponential. That is this. Okay, what is cos square omega? What, what is cos omega? Cos omega is e power j omega plus e power minus j omega by 2. So this square is taken as whole square. Okay, now further simplification would look like this. Yeah, this 1 by 2 pi is there outside, right? So this square, this square would make it 4. So this 4 coming out would make it 1 by 8 pi. So that is what 1 by 8 pi here. Yeah, and the rest is this. It is a square plus b square plus a b form. Is this that? Yeah, that is what is. You have a plus b whole square form. So it is a square plus b square plus 2ab. And that gives you this. Okay. 2ab is becoming 2 because these two if multiplied would give you 0. So it would be b power 0. So it would be 1. So it's 2 into 1. That's why it's taken. Now just you have three terms. Fine. All the three terms would get uh, along with uh, this particular exponential. Okay. And this integration is applied everywhere to every term. Fine. And if you work out this. Okay, applying the inverse DTFT. Okay, uh, so well, this is how it looks like. Fine, you can take this out. If you take this out, what is left behind is x of n. So that x of n is being attached with this e power j2 omega. Understand? The frequency domain signal is having this. So the time domain signal should have what? Okay, is the uh, reason for this. So which property is being used? See, time shift property. If you have shift in time domain, you will have that shift being reflected as this exponential in frequency domain. Similarly, there is this exponential. There is this exponential. Understand that? Okay, there is no exponential here, right? It's omega n. So these two are, since there is no exponential, there is no shift. Here is the exponential that is minus 2, that's why it is minus 2. Here it is plus 2, that's why it is plus. Okay, so this is time shift property. By time shift property, and if you apply inverse DTFT, this is how it is going to look like. Okay, just, just see the time shift property, you would understand, and just rearrange these terms. Understand that x. Uh, this is your x e power j omega. X e power j omega is exponential. It is accompanied by an exponential. So when would uh, a DTFT gets accompanied by an exponential when there is a shift in the time domain? When there is shift in the frequency, there would be what would there be here? There will be an exponential in time domain. If there is a shift in the frequency, there will be an exponential in the time domain. Okay, if there is shift in the time domain, there will be an exponential in frequency domain. Hope you would understand. See, this is frequency domain signal. How to how to understand that? See here, this is where x of e power j omega comes, right? Okay, so this x of e power j omega is being accompanied by other than this another exponential. Okay, so when would this x of e power j omega would be accompanied by an exponential? This exponential, that is when you have a shift in time, in time. Understand that point? Okay, so you, you just uh, work out this problem you would uh, make out. Okay, don't see this as a whole equation. Just see this. Just see this part. These parts where x of e power j omega is there. Just see these parts. And when would there be an exponential along with x e power j omega? When there is a shift in time. Understand this? Okay. Now, uh, let's move on with uh, another problem. 
So this this looks uh, simple. This again is the DTFT. You have cos omega plus j sine omega. What is cos omega plus j sine omega? Next to be understood. It is uh, e power j omega. Cos omega plus j sine omega in exponential. It is e power j omega. Okay. Now using the time shift property again. Okay. Delta of n it is one. It is one. Delta of n minus n naught it is e power minus j n naught omega. See there is an exponential. If there is a one here, if there is an one here, it is delta of n. If there is an exponential e power j omega, when there is e power j omega, okay, there is one here. So there is a shift in time. I hope you understand. See here, this is the solution. Okay. Yeah, just just understand that. Just understand. Yeah. This is x e power j omega is taken as this. Okay. Now there is an exponential in frequency domain, mind you. There is an exponential in frequency domain. And this exponential in frequency domain is along is there along with one. What is the uh, DTFT of one? What is the inverse that inverse uh, DTFT of one? It is delta of n. Inverse DTFT of one is delta of n, and that is accompanied by this exponential. When would this be accompanied by an exponential? When delta of n is shifted. See, when delta of n is shifted, it is delta of n minus n naught. Suppose, okay, what would be DTFT of it? The DTFT of this would be e power minus j n naught omega. Okay, if there is minus n naught, there is minus n naught as power e power j omega to the power minus n naught. Understand this? Okay, so here there is no minus n. What is what is the shift here? In place of minus n naught, what do you have? In place of minus n naught, what do you have? Plus one you have e power j omega one. So in place of minus n naught, you have one. So in place of minus n naught, you need to have plus one. That's that's why this signal x of n is delta of n plus one. If this is your frequency domain signal, your time domain signal is this. So this is little confusing if you are not good enough to understand uh, the standard uh, signals. If it is delta of n, it is one. When would there be an exponential in frequency domain? There will be there will be a exponential in frequency domain when there is a shift in the signal in time domain. Okay, if the shift is minus n naught, that minus n naught is reflected in the exponential. It is e power j omega to the power minus n naught, but it is just e power j omega. That means there is a one here. Okay. So what is the shift? If it is e power minus e power j omega to the power minus n naught means the shift is minus n naught. If it is e power j omega to the power one means it is uh, plus one shift. So it is delta of n plus one. Okay. So if you don't understand, just sit, observe this exponential and this exponential. When would this exponential come? When there is a shift minus n naught. When would this exponential come? When there is a Shift n plus. One. Understand that? Okay. So I I think you should you should sit and do this. You will understand. Fine. Now let's move on to another uh, uh, problem. Uh, again, uh, we have to be finding out uh, uh, the uh, inverse DTFT. Inverse DTFT we have to find out. We have to find out x of n. And it is very similar to uh, the problems that we have done in uh, Z transform. That is using the partial expand partial fraction expansion. Okay, so uh, this is what is this? We need to factorize. Okay, we need to factorize the denominator here. Fine. How does it look like? See if we factorize. It is going to look like this. Which form this is? A square minus B square form. This is A square. One square is anyways one. So this is b square this is a square minus b square what is a square minus b square if this is a square and this is b square what is b square how can i write it in terms of square it is 1 by 4 it is 1 by 4 into e power j omega see 1 by 4 e power j omega 
if you take the square root of this. So how can I write it as square? It's one by four e power minus e omega whole square. So this is b, this is a. So it is a square plus b square will give you a plus b into a minus b or a minus b into a plus b. That is how it is. It has factors. Okay. Now uh, you're not anyways taking that uh, z we used to take here onto the left hand side because we are dealing with the negative exponential. If we, if we were dealing with the positive exponential, yes, we, would, we should have taken care of that. Okay, but we are looking at the negative exponential. So that's not necessary. Now, using the partial fraction expansion, this particular x e power g omega can be written as this. And if you work out, your a and b happen to be one and two respectively. a is one and b is two. Just substitute that over here. Fine. Now, this is in the standard form. Which standard form is this? See here. If you have to just rewind and see what is u of n or what is a power n. U of this, they're all uh, standard transforms. For u of n, it is one by one minus e power minus the omega. For a power n u of n, it is this. So it is it is in the form a power n u of n times. See here. There is a a. There is an exponential. So what is a here? A is one by four. Understand? So seeing this, can you write the time domain signal for this? Is the question. Okay. So how can we write that? Taking the inverse z transform on this. Okay. We can write our x of n as 1 by 4 to the power n u of n. And this 2 is there, right? There is a plus here. So it becomes minus, four, minus 1 by 4 to the power n u of n. Okay. So... Uh, this is how it uh, looks like in partial fraction expansion. Fine. I've been doing uh, very few problems and very basic problems because it's very particularly said in uh, uh, the syllabus that we have to be covering the basic problems only. Okay. What are basic problems? I've just, I've just solved all variety of the problems, but taking very basic signals. Basic signals, you see u of n half power n or 1 by 4 to the power n u of n. Okay, the unit step signal or uh, the exponential signal. Fine. So go through all this. Uh, I think this should be sufficient uh, from your examination point. Okay. I think uh, we can uh, stop the uh, session here.